the car seat test for newborns, what parents and caregivers should know. This presentation was produced by the Maryland Institute of Emergency Medical Services Systems with federal and state grant funding. All messages meet best practice guidelines as of May 2021. The use of specific car seats or products in this video does not mean a recommendation by MIMS. The American Academy of Pediatrics states that babies born early are more likely to have breathing or heart problems while sitting semi-upright, such as when they are riding in their car seat. They recommend that hospitals monitor premature babies or babies with health problems in their car seat before they go home from the hospital. This monitoring period is currently called the car seat tolerance screen. The hospital staff will tell you if your baby needs to have this test. Who should get the car seat tolerance screen before discharge home from the hospital? Babies who are born before week 37 of their mother's pregnancy or those who might have breathing problems when laying more upright, babies with birth issues affecting their breathing or lungs, those having a very low level of muscle tone or nerve problems, those with heart disease, and babies who are a low weight, even if they are born full term. What do parents care and caregivers need to do to prepare for this test? First, they should purchase a car seat that is right for their baby to use for the test and for after discharge. The car seat on the left is an infant type of car seat. You can carry your baby around in this outside of the car. The car seat on the right is a convertible type. It stays in the car and can be used either rear facing for younger children or forward facing for older children. Either of these types of seats is fine if your baby meets the seats weight and height minimums, and you can install it properly in your vehicle. Talk to the hospital staff or Maryland Kids and Safety Seats if you aren't sure if your car seat is the right one. How do you know the seat is the right one for your baby? Well, you should read the car seat's labels. The labels can be on the seats, in the manual, or you can look at the box it is sold in. Car seats must be okay for the size and weight of the baby at the time of the test. For instance, a four pound baby cannot be tested and discharged in a car seat marked for babies starting at a five pound weight. Note, there are a few seats that are rated for use with babies weighing as little as three pounds. These have some very special features to make them fit these tiny babies. Here is a convertible car seat and the label on the side of it. Note that the label has different guidelines for when you use it rear facing for a young child or for when you use it forward facing for an older child. And they're color coded. Blue is the lower weight and orange would be the forward facing for older kids. A car seat should not be expired or missing any parts. Check the label on the back of the seat, plus the manual to find the expiration date and a list or picture of all the parts that should be with the seat. What is the next thing that parents or caregivers do to prepare for this test? Well, they read the car seat manual. And remember that one brand of car seats can work differently than another brand. So you really have to read the manual that comes with your seat. Where can you find the car seat manual? It might be behind or under the car seat. It could be attached to the brand new seat. It could be in a storage area on the base. And all of the car seats will have a manual available online. You would search with the car seat manufacturer's name, the car seat name, and then the word manual. If you haven't already, you need to make an appointment with a child passenger safety technician to help you adjust your seat to fit your child and to help you install it in your car. In-person or video appointments can be made by contacting Maryland Kids and Safety Seats at the email or phone number shown here. Also, there are excellent videos online to teach you how and why to keep your child safe in the car. 
this QR code can be used to access one of those. What's the next step to prepare for this test? Caregivers need to bring into the hospital the car seat, its manual, and any pads that came with the seat. Bring this in as soon as possible if your baby is in the full-term nursery, or bring it in two to three days before discharge if the baby is in the NICU or the special care nursery. Usually there is no need to bring in the base of the carrier type seat, as the base is meant to be used in the car. It is heavy, also it's not needed for the test. Once you're in the hospital with your car seat, work with the nurses to make sure your car seat straps fit your baby. Fitting a car seat for a newborn may include adjusting the harness location at the baby's shoulders, the harness length, the crotch strap with the buckle, the harness width at the hips, and checking your baby's fit with or without the pads that come with the seat. How do you move the harness straps to fit your baby? The shoulder straps need to be moved so that they are located at or below the top of the baby's shoulders. Place the baby in the car seat with her back flat against the back of the seat and her bottom at the lowest point. Look to see which harness slot in the shell of the car seat is at the baby's shoulder level or below. For most car seats, you will need to take the baby out of the seat to move the straps, then turn the seat over. And for many car seats, you will need to then slide the shoulder webbing off from the metal splitter plate that is on the back of the seat. Once the fabric loop is off the splitter plate, move one harness strap at a time back through the slot in the car seat shell and padding, and then from the front of the seat, move the harness to the proper slot and push it through to the back. Reattach the harness strap to the splitter plate. Some seats will need to have the harnesses shortened to fit a newborn. Check the instructions carefully for how your seat adjusts. This seat has its harness straps in the shorter newborn position, as evidenced by the extra webbing loops hanging below and behind the splitter plate. Repeat this process for the other harness strap. Here is how the seat looks after being adjusted to fit a newborn. The harnesses are in the lowest slots for the tiniest babies, and the strap length is in the shortest setting. Some car seats can adjust from the front, so you don't have to move the harnesses off of a splitter plate. To do this, you usually squeeze and pull a tab. The harnesses may adjust along with a head support. Again, the straps have to be at or below the baby's shoulders to keep the baby safe. Many seats need the crotch strap or the buckle part of the harness to be in the newborn position. When fitted properly, there should be no gap between the baby and the crotch strap, nor should the baby be sitting on the strap. Check the manual for how to make this adjustment. The pages from an even flow car seat on the right show how to move a small metal part through the car seat to adjust it. A few seats also have an adjustment in the hip area. Head or body pads may come with your seat. Check the manual for how to use them. Often you don't have to use the head pad and the parent or the nurse can decide if it helps with the fit of the seat for the baby. Some manufacturers require that the body pad be used for small infants and many car seats will tell you when or if you must stop using the pad. Do not use anything in or on the car seat that did not come with the seat. You or the nurse will place your baby in the car seat and fasten the harnesses into the buckle. Pull any loose harness up from the hip area and toward the shoulders. 
check the manual for how to remove the extra webbing to tighten the harness. In this seat, you pull a strap that's located near the baby's feet to tighten it. How tight should the harnesses be? In this left picture, the harness straps are way too loose and the webbing can be pinched. Proper snubness is when you cannot pit, pinch any webbing, like here in this center photo. Also, be sure to fasten the chest clip and move it to the armpit or nipple region. Double check to make sure the harness is snug throughout its length. In this photo, is the mom putting her baby in the car seat correctly? No, this baby is slumped in her seat. This may push her chin to her chest and slow her breathing and cause her to fail the car seat test. Double check that your, baby, your baby's back is flat against the seat back and the baby is bending at her hips at the lowest part of the seat. Now your baby is ready for the car seat tolerance screen test. Nurses will conduct this after your baby is at least a day old, but at least a day before your baby might go home. The test might happen during the night when the nursery is quiet. The test may occur soon after a feeding, as this is typical of what will happen after discharge. For instance, when you're home, you're probably gonna feed your baby right before heading out the door to drive to the doctor's office. What equipment is used for this test? Well, first, there will be an electronic monitor to show the baby's breathing and heart information. The monitor is connected with small wires to some pads that are painlessly placed on your baby's skin. These read information about your baby's heart and breathing. There will also be a pulse oximeter, which is a little pad that is wrapped around a toe or finger to painlessly measure the amount of oxygen the baby has in her blood. It is connected to the monitor. Baby's heart rate and breathing will be monitored for about an hour and a half. And if anything isn't normal, the nurse will adjust the baby in the seat or stop the test and take the baby out of the car seat. The three different lines and the numbers on this monitor are all normal. What happens if baby fails the test? Well, the baby will be watched carefully and monitored more in his or her crib. Often, the baby just needs to grow more before discharge home. Other tests may be done to make sure there are no health problems, and the test will be repeated in a day or so. After a baby fails the car seat tolerance screen, sometimes the baby is sent home with a breathing tube and air from an oxygen tank. If this is the case, check your car's manual for how to store the equipment safely and securely. Rarely, the doctor believes the baby should ride flat and will repeat the test with the baby in a car bed that the hospital provides. If the baby passes the test in this car bed, then you will use the car bed for a couple weeks. Your baby will then be retested in his own car seat pass the test in that before your baby stops using the car bed and switches to using his car seat. If your baby needs to use a car bed, get help with using it from a certified child passenger safety technician. Car beds are installed very differently from car seats and can be tricky to use, so ask if your hospital has a technician. Listed here are two places you can contact to get free help. Discharge day is here and your baby goes home for the first time. For the first few car rides, always have an adult sit in the back seat, buckled up near the newborn in his or her car seat, and have that adult watch the baby and make sure the baby is okay. Some more guidelines. Make sure you harness your baby snugly anytime your baby is in the car seat, not just in the car. 
don't put your newborn in other semi-upright seats like jumpers or swings until your pediatrician says it is okay. As a review, what is not the safest in each picture? In this picture, the harness straps are located above the baby's shoulders when they should be at the baby's shoulders or below, and the chest clip is missing. For this picture, in the middle, the harness straps are too loose all over, and the straps are located above the baby's shoulders in the wrong slot. In this last picture, the one on the right, a blanket roll is added around the baby's head. This can push the baby's chin to chest, possibly blocking his breathing. Never add anything to your seat that didn't come with the seat. Remember, you can get help anytime with your car seat by contacting Maryland Kids and Safety Seats at the Maryland Department of Health. Thank you for listening to this presentation and stay safe.